Do you agree to the privacy Postmaster International, as well as the unassociated remote posting service? Some of your personal information, such as name, image, and any share message may be shared with other meeting participants and will be recorded, and same recordings may be used in the future as the cloud sees fit. Your remote attendance hereby discharges Toastmaster International and University Malaya Toastmaster Club from all claims, demands, rights, promises, damages, and liabilities arising out of or in connection with the use or distribution of same video recordings and or photo images, including but not limited to any claims for invasion of privacy, appropriation of likeness, or defaming. So for today's meeting, there are two housekeeping rules for you to keep in mind for all the online audience. Please have your video switch on throughout the meeting as one of the needs of interaction with other participants. Finally, please keep your mind on mute when you're not speaking. For guests, you're encouraged to partake in the tabletopic session where you can practice giving impromptu speech. Without any delay, I'll now pass the control over to the club president mm -hmm. for welcoming address. Over to you, Toast Master. Thank you. My check, can anyone hear me and see me? Can hear, can see. All right. Self-determination is the ability for persons to make decisions to manage their lives. For a nation, it's the ability to decide how it is governed. We are about nine days from our Independence Day. 31st of August. It's not, it's a special day, not because it's a public holiday, also not because that there are a lot of crazy sales and discounts ongoing because of that, but because of its historical moments whereby the nation's self determination is finally get recognized on that day. 1957, where we finally have the power to govern our land. Now, personally, I don't have the power to govern this land, but the least I could do to appreciate this effort is to love the country. So I bought myself a mini Jalo Gemilang and I, I have a picture to show, but I couldn't show you right now. I stick the flag on my, the back of my motorcycles and I ride motorcycles every day, practicing patriotism. Now, patriotism is the thing that we miss. We miss doing this in school time, especially in primary school. And I do feel good that finally I'm doing this again. Now, I want to take this chance, the opportunity to acknowledge external Toastmasters coming from other clubs be here today to help us. Welcome Jun Hong, President from CBRA Toastmaster Club. Welcome Chloe from Master Jaya Toastmaster Club. Welcome Danish from Malacca Toastmaster Club. Thank you for helping us. Of course, welcome back all my beloved club members and welcome all the guests today. Now, I hope today from this meeting, all of us will get to speak better which is one of the core purpose we join a Toastmasters meeting, right? So I'll now officially call this meeting to order. Now, before this, I forgot to introduce our newcomer, the newest, latest additions to UM Toastmasters family. Welcome, Jocelyn. Glad to have you here. Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome to join this family. Now, I would like to... Um, pass this stage to Vice President of Membership, Joshua, to conduct new member induction ceremony for Jocelyn. So over to Joshua. Thank you, Ming Kang. Uh, okay, so now we shall have a induction ceremony for our new member, Jocelyn. So, hello Toastmasters. It is now our duty and privilege to induct Jocelyn, our new member, into University of Malaya Toastmasters Club. This is an important occasion, both for the new member and for our club. The individual have come to Toastmasters seeking to improve their communication and leadership, and we now have an opportunity to help them learn, grow, and achieve. 
So I will now call our new member forward and ask her to join me. So please withhold your applause until the ceremony is completed. To Jocelyn, you are now joining a worldwide organization that has helped more than 4, than 4 million people learn to communicate effectively. As a member of the University of Malaya Toastmasters Club, you will benefit from a proven program of self-development. You will become part of an outstanding group of people who are dedicated to helping one another in a spirit of sharing and enjoyment. To, to Mr. Yumeng, our Vice President of Education, have the new members been given an opportunity to discuss her needs and goals with the club? Have she been told how Toastmasters program works and informed of the many benefits she will receive as well as the obligations of membership? Uh, yes. All right. And who have been assigned as mentor for the new member? Uh, Rafi. Iktifa Rafi. Okay. All right. So would Toastmaster Iktifa please join us as well? As experienced Toastmasters, you have been asked to help the new member get off to a good start. Do you accept this responsibility and pledge to share your knowledge and experience with our new member so that she can immediately begin to benefit from her Toastmasters membership? I do. Okay. Membership in this club and Toastmasters International is a privilege that carries with it many rewards. Yet, it also places certain obligations upon you. We are a group of people brought together to do things we could not accomplish alone. Our collective obligation is to grow and improve ourselves and to share our knowledge and experience with fellow members in a spirit of enjoyment. This means you must work diligently toward your own self-development, evaluate others' speeches, in a spirit of support and sharing. Assist the club in reaching its goals, remain positive, and keep a smile on your face. We ask you, our new member, to dedicate yourself to personal growth, to share this great gift with your fellow members, and to help keep this Toastmasters Club strong and dynamic. So uh, you, may, you may repeat the following words that I'm about to say. So I... I, Jocelyn, Jocelyn, in the presence of my, in the presence of my fellow members, fellow members of, of University Malaya Toastmasters Club, University Malaya Toastmasters Club, make this firm, make this firm obligation, obligation. To attend meetings. To attend meetings. Regularly. Regularly. And prepare fully. And prepare fully. For each assignment. For each assignment. To apply myself. To apply myself. To the projects outlined. To the projects outlined. In the Toastmasters. In the Toastmasters. Education program. Education program. To participate actively. To participate actively. In club activities. In club activities. To evaluate others. To evaluate others. In a positive. In a positive. Constructive manner. Constructive manner. To build open. To build open. Friendly relationships. Friendly relationships. With my fellow members. With my fellow members. And to bring. And to bring. Other new members. Other new members. Into the club. Into the club. So that they. So that they. Can also gain. Can also gain. The benefit of. The benefit of. Toastmasters. Toastmasters. 
All right. Now, would all club members repeat the club's pledge to its new members? We, we, we the members of the members, members of, of University Malaya Toastmasters Club. University Malaya Toastmasters Club. Pledge to pledge to pledge to pledge to support you. Support, support you. you. About you. In your quest. In your in quest. Your quest. For self-development. For, for self-development. Self to provide you with. To provide to you, provide you with, with. Positive. Positive. Helpful evaluations. Helpful, helpful evaluations. evaluations. To maintain a. To maintain a. a Friendly, 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 supportive, supportive, supportive atmosphere, 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 to give you, to give, to give you, you opportunities, 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 to help others, to help, to help others, others, and to make, and to make, and to make. And to make your Toastmasters membership, <coughs> your Toastmasters, your Toastmasters membership, membership, a rewarding, a rewarding, a rewarding, rewarding and, fulfilling, and fulfilling, and fulfilling, and fulfilling experience, experience, experience. And that concludes our new members induction ceremony. Welcome, Jocelyn, to University Malaya Toastmasters Club. And now I shall pass back to Ming Kang, our <coughs> president. Thank you. Welcome again, Jocelyn, to UM Toastmaster Club. Now, I shall pass the stage to Toastmaster of the Evening, also Vice President Education of UM Toastmaster Club. Let's welcome Toastmaster Yu Ming Chong. Stage is yours. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the 339 meeting of new M Toastmasters Club. And today, uh, the, the theme for today's meeting is self-determination. So Ming Kan has pointed out that there are many aspects to what self-determination self -determination means uh, from personal aspect, which is uh, personal development. And likewise, uh, recalling back our history uh, since 1957, where this part of the land, which is called Malaya, uh, uh, forgive, forgive me for being pedantic, uh, gained independence from British on the 31st of August, 1957. Uh, first, I'd like to share the screen. Please hold on a sec. So welcome Toastmasters and guests to our 339 meeting, which is nine days away from, uh, from the National Day celebration. And the theme for today is self-determination, which I said earlier, which not only includes uh, the personal aspect of self-determination, which is uh, the, 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 the effort which we have to develop, uh, the, our own drive to develop our own uh, to improve ourselves, that is what I mean by determination. And of course, the word of the day is prelude, which the grammarian is going to uh, describe its meaning. So why I choose the word prelude is because nine days away from National Day celebration is honestly, is a prelude to that. So imagine, imagine you are in 1957 and yeah, uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of preparation, which is what we say the prelude of the August occasion. So um, this is a very interesting quote, which I found uh, yesterday, which is know what you want and reach out eagerly for it. This is essentially what self-determination is. Um, I didn't really read that book, but you can check it out. I heard it's quite a good book. Mm. So let's talk about self-determination and the aspect of our, of, in aspect of our own club, UM Toastmasters Club. So uh, for, uh, does anyone here know this symbol, this logo here? Um, raise, I mean, you can just 
put the you can just type one if you know what it is. So this is Chitra. So it's a shorthand for Center of Industrial Training and Relations, which is quite a cute name. I like the hibiscus flower, which is quite, which is our national flower. Wow, that's a great, good time to celebrate National Day nine days before. Uh, so um, UM Toastmasters Club actually is founded by, I mean, kickstarted by Professor Mahoraini Yusuf and Dr. Stephanie Pillai. So, so it started from Mahorani, uh, which helps to start kick, uh, get the first gathering in place, of course, with the help of other fellow Toastmasters Club. Likewise, uh, uh, Dr. Stephanie Pillai, after, the, after Mahorani has left Chitra to do other important tasks, uh, Dr. Stephanie actually have secured the venue and funding. And thanks to, thanks to their self-determination, they managed to get, we managed to get very interesting results. The first and foremost is that we got recognized by student affairs department in UM's business is known as HEP. And later on, we also got the members from various areas. It started from ling language and linguistics, later on to faculty and science and arts, which is still holds on to this day. And lastly, um, which to make things more, more interesting, we got officially reckon, registered on 18th of April, 2007. So I think we have celebrated our own, our Toastmasters founding a uh, few months ago in April. Uh, I think Ming Kang was the game master back then. So, yeah. So the flow is uh, straightforward. It starts with table topic speeches where mangoes and guests, everyone included, uh, will present impromptu speeches and Kao Yang will be, uh, will be the table topics masters. He will be the one um, setting up the topics for everyone to play with. As for prepared speeches, we have two members here and they will be presenting prepared speeches with specific objectives. And lastly, everyone's speeches will be evaluated. So uh, table topic speeches and prepared speeches will be, will be provided respective feedbacks, which are very helpful for your future speeches. So now let's meet our technical role players. Let's start with our, our grammarian, Ming Kang. Ming Kang, the floor is yours. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, today I am a grammarian. The role of grammarian is to listen attentively to all speakers listen attentively, especially to three things, improper language usage, outstanding language usage, and also what of the day usage. As grammarian, it's also my duty to introduce the word of the day. So for today's meeting, word of the day is prelude. Prelude, so now meaning something that comes before a more important event or actions. I'll give two examples to use the word prelude. The dinner serves as a prelude to a much larger meeting. Invasion of Poland by Nazi was a prelude of World War II. So each speaker is encouraged to use World of the Day prelude. And I'll report the, I'll, uh, as I'll report the grammarians, uh, grammarian reports and also World of the Day reports when called upon during the meeting. So pass the floor back to you, Ming. Thank you, Ming Kang, for introducing his role as a grammarian for today. So I hope everyone will try to use the word prelude as many as possible. Next will be our accountant, Hong Jin. Will you mind introducing your role to us? The floor is yours. Hi, uh, greetings, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster and guests. The purpose of the art counter is to note words and sounds that are used as crunch or pause filler by anyone who speaks. During the meeting, I will listen for overused words, including and, wow, but, so, and you know. I will also listen for filler sounds, including uh, mm, er. Uh. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrase, such as I, I, or this means, this means, 
at the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker used this expression. Thank you, Mr. Toastmasters. Thank you, Tong Jing, for introducing his, introducing his role as our counter for today. Um, right now, um, it, before, so I'd like, to in, I'd like Daryl to introduce his role as a timer. Daryl, the floor is yours. So greetings, um, everyone, fellow Toastmasters and guests. As timer, I will time the table topic speakers, formal speeches, and the evaluations. And I will also alert each speaker of the time that they have left using the green, yellow, and red um, backgrounds. So I will now demonstrate the backgrounds. This is the green, uh, yellow, and red background. And the timing details will be explained by the respective session masters. That is all back to you, Yuman. Thank you, Daryl, for helping us to keep our meeting on time. Lastly, I'd like to, uh, I'd like Danish to introduce his role as a general evaluator for today. Danish? Good evening, everyone. Yep, and can everyone hear me? Can, sure. All right. Good evening, everyone. I'm Danish Akta. I'm from Malacca Toastmasters Club. And today I'll be your general evaluator and my role is to, and my duty, my role and duty is to, sorry, yes, that's right. I'm the general evaluator for, I'll be the general evaluator for tonight's meeting. Now, as a general evaluator, my role is to evaluate everything that takes place throughout the meeting and give my report at during the general evaluation session. That's all from me from now. Now I would like to pass the floor back to the Toastmaster of Evening, Yu Ming. Thank you, Danish, for introducing, introducing his role as a general evaluator. So now let's get things to business. And, oh, sorry. Um, so uh, before I'm going to start with prepared speeches, which will, like I say, we will start with uh, introducing the table topics master for today, who is Kao Yang. So Kao Yang, the uh, floor is yours. Hello everyone. So Table Topic is a session where we will be trying out our impromptu speeches and uh, basically I am the Table Topic Master. Today I will be giving out topics relating to the theme of the day which is self-determination. So as mentioned by the Toastmaster of the evening as well as our president, self-determination, there are many aspects to it. So there's the personal and then there's the historical and many others uh, for today's table topic i will be handling self-determination on a personal level so ladies and gentlemen um for this part i would like to ask the uh, timer to demonstrate the timing light after all for impromptu speech you will be time as well Alright, uh, so thank you, Timer Daryl, for that. For this speech, it will last up to uh, 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The green light will appear at 1 minute and 30 seconds. The yellow light will appear at 2 minutes. The red light would appear at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. That's when you need to stop speaking <laughs> and give other people the chance to speak. And like uh, after 3 minutes, that's when you are over time. Alright. Uh, is there any indication for overtime, Timer Daryl? Yes, uh, the lights will go crazy basically. <laughs> Alright. So uh, shall we start our table topic session? So, the definition of self-determination is uh, many, there are many ways, but psychologically, there is a theory dedicated entirely on this. Back in the 1980s, 1990s, there's a lot of people studying it, and, and by the 2000s, there is a lot of solid evidence that for people who self-determine their life, tends to just tends to a little bit to be slightly happier so for today's session we're going to find out if you have a 
high degree of self-determination or the latter uh, which is you you take in your uh, happiness say from external factors which is also a good thing there's no right or wrong here so today is kind of like a fun uh, question questionnaire session for the table topic so with that uh, can i have the very first volunteer uh, come may i go first all right good uh, maybe someone can help pin this very nice individual i believe <laughs> Ah yes, uh, Joshua. Right. So Joshua, your topic is now you can say you agree or disagree or unsure, and then you can elaborate. I often feel like I control the things I do. I often feel like I control the things that I do. Joshua Lim. I'm unsure whether I am often controlling the things that I do because in the morning when I wake up, I have two options. The first option is to go to the toilet and brush my teeth. The second option is lying down on my bed and scrolling through the phone, seeing the latest updates in social media. Now, I have a will, I have a determination of whether I want to force myself to get out of bed and do, do all my daily routine or continue to procrastinate and waste more time on my bed to see, look through my phone and read a book or maybe even play a game. Ultimately, just from that one small situation alone, it shows that I can't really control the things that I want in my life because I tend to get tempted by my phone and I end up lying down on my bed. Moving from my bed to my living room, now, currently, I'm in semester break. I don't have much things to do. So the first thing that I do after waking up from my bed is I'll go to the kitchen. Now, in the kitchen, there's a lot of good food. The question is, should I stick to eating two slices of bread or should I add some more? Maybe after finishing two slices of bread, I can have some biscuits or a cake to complement it. So which one do you think I would go? Do you think I would go for the two slices of bread or I will add a compliment, which is biscuits and cakes after having two slices of bread? Okay. The answer is it depends on, it, it depends. If I am hungry, I will go with option B. I will have cakes and biscuits to complement with my two slices of bread. But if I feel like you know, I'm getting fat these days. I should just cut down on my, on my weight and some stuff like that. Then I will go with option A. I'll have two slices of bread, drink my coffee, and that's it. Put my plate in the basin. And from there to living room, the same thing happened over and over again. Always having two options. So in conclusion, whether or not I can control the things in my life, I'm really unsure about it. Back to you, Postmaster Vicky. Thank you so much to Toastmaster Joshua. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you just leave it to fate, don't you think so? And uh, go for the whim. Whatever flows, go with it. Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, you kind of feel like uh, these are the line of uh, logic when it comes to the question. You can agree, disagree, or you can say you're unsure, just like Joshua. Who would like to test out the second question? I would like to try. Oh, okay, Kenneth. Uh, we're going to pick your brain right now and see what you will think. Huh? All right, Kenneth. I see a stranger in the mirror. I see a stranger in the mirror. Toastmaster Kenneth. Well, this sometimes contradicts with our personal behavior and the behavior that others sense in their own eyes. 
So let us just pause a second. Let me ask everyone here. Whoever received comments that others comment something differently than one you have, what you have expected? Anyone? Just raise up your hands. Yeah, that's great. It's because we have two different perspectives from us and from the audience. We tend to see things from our eyes. From our senses, from our first point of but what we see, what we experience, or what we show in our life might be different than what others perceive us. Like for example, I don't feel myself really hardworking in my studies, you know, sometimes. Like for example, after I've studied chapter one, I know I've already studied chapter two yesterday, but I don't have the sense of secureness. Therefore, I study chapter two. I always believe that, oh, I'm not trying my best. I'm not doing what I can do it fully. But you know, my parents say, hey, Kenneth, enough already. Tomorrow you're having exam. It is not the correct way to read the whole textbook. Enough already. Don't be put, don't be, don't put excessive effort onto your studies. We have been studying whole day, from day to morning, and now you are still studying nonstop. I'm like, I don't really, I don't even put full effort into it. I, I feel like this, and I have a lot of stuff, a lot of exercises haven't complete, and I have a lot of revision sets haven't completed yet. Yeah, yeah, I saw it, someone, right? Kiasu, yes, that's the concept of Kiasuism. Therefore, I don't perceive myself as a kiasu people, but you know, others perceive me as kiasu because I always try my best for, for myself, feel that I'm not doing that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, kiasuism is sometimes beneficial for life, but don't overdo it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wow, okay. I think like uh, for you, kind of, you have some kind of self-realization over there. And I like that you shared that at the same time, even if you determine your own fate, people, other people will perceive differently. They might think like, oh, kiasu, kiasu. But like, you know, sometimes you don't feel like it. So that's, uh, thank you so much for your perspective there, Kenneth. Now, uh, this is a really fun session, so I encourage everyone to join in if they can. Why don't All right? we uh, uh, let the new member, Jocelyn, to try out? Jocelyn, would you like to try it? Maybe next time. <laughs> uh, Alright, maybe see. next round, next okay. round, okay? So, um, uh, we'll have three. another volunteer. Um, cut, cut, sorry. Maybe to entice them, right, you can tell them about the price. Ah, yes. So, uh, I nearly forgot about that. There is a prize uh, for the best speaker for Table Topics here. So, uh, Iktifar, uh, it is a prized prize. With <laughs> a prize. So, um, for that, should I reveal the whole thing? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I suggest not to. <laughs> uh, it's a secret, alright? So, uh, please. Do come up and then try your luck to be the winner of Table <coughs> Topics. Who's yeah, the sponsor? I think well, it's worth it. La. It's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. Alright, um, uh, third participant, third volunteer. Um, or you will uh, be Li volunteer. Wei? Li Wei would like to try out? Thank uh, you, Li Wei. Yi Wei. Yi Wei. Would like to try out? Uh, he's a guest here, so uh, like to encourage guests to join the fun, you know. All right. Uh, if you are not going to volunteer, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to win. So with that, I will choose our guest, uh, Lim Ani from KPKL Toastmasters. Okay. So, 
Toastmaster Limani. Your topic is My emotions often seem to belong to me. My emotions often seem to belong to me. My emotions always seem belongs to me. Wow. Mm. I don't think so. I think sometimes our emotion will be affected by others, especially um, for me, because uh, I, I think we ex accept that if we are very confident and But um, reach that level of maturity yet in my uh, EQ because I think that is a very um, high level to achieve. Though I am working myself on that because um, calmness and uh, calmness is very important, especially in my job as a teacher. If I do not have in control of my emotion, I might get uh, get angry. Uh, easily so that's very important that I am in control of my emotion calmness when I should be and if I really has to be angry with my uh, students I have to do it in a way that's uh, uh, help them not that uh, uh, undermine their attitude uh, their need to learn or their feel to learn so I feel that we we should try to take um, in control of our emotion, though it is not always uh, happened that way because uh, recently I feel that I really lost it <laughs> uh, when somebody uh, do not respect what I work on and I really uh, like a volcano people say because I have, I have been very conversant my colleagues say, oh, Chegu, I've never seen you angry like this. I say, yes, that person have uh, clicked on the wrong button at that day and, and make me uh, lost control. And I feel um, I feel very bad about it. But then sometimes I feel that if we feel uh, every, uh, keep calm and people step on us, it is also a bad thing. So sometimes we just have to speak up and let people know, hey, I got my opinion here, and you don't just simply step on me. Okay, back to you, table topic master. All right, terima kasih, cikgu. So now we have a very strong uh, no right here, and I really like your response by being firm with your position and giving examples. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a really really um, open area where you can really talk about anything you can talk on the topic you can talk to disagree the topic you can even talk around the topic all right we're here to really practice our table topic or our impromptu speech now who wants to try next before you get to be volunteered by our friendly Toastmasters right here okay <laughs> if you're not going to be forced you will be peer pressured Oh, Ming Kang. <laughs> okay, Ming Kang. Okay, okay. Good, good. So, your topic is I give you a special one. No, 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 they're all the same. I feel that I am rarely myself. I feel that I am rarely myself. Toastmaster Ming Kang. I am what? Rarely myself. Not usually okay. myself. Um, I do have something to talk about for this. I, if you know me, I'm the person who is rather hard to decline people's invitations. If you ask me for dinner, how could I say no? If you ask me to help you, how could I say no? Um, I always say yes to things that I love to do and also to things that I'm not really wanted to do. But just because I wanted to help people, sometimes I, sometimes people ask me to, I don't know, to be with them 
notes for doing nothing, which I think I could have used the time to study or to improve myself on, or to do something meaningful to me. But I choose to be with them because they ask me for help. So yeah, uh, this is my personal, this is my own personalities and you will really see me say no, at least I really, really, really don't want to do. So to answer these table topics, I am ready myself, right? I, I would definitely say sometimes, yes, I do things that I do things that I not enjoying, even though no one would notice it. You notice me really enjoying doing stuff, right? Um, Sometimes I just want to please people, you know. It, it, if you know the feelings, you will know because this is who I am. And I am I know I, I do receive a lot of advice from people saying that it's okay to say no. And you but I I always I always feel I was like I always wanted to feel others' feelings. Oh, what if I what if they are sad? Or what if they they don't like me anymore. They don't, they, what if they see me differently anymore? And that's why in the end I choose to, okay, I just go, it's okay. But yeah, I definitely know that this is not something really good. Um, sometimes I don't have time to do my own stuff because of this, but this is who I am. Um, I would love to change that and I'm changing this. Yeah, I'm proving. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you so much to Ming Kang for sharing his, I would say, struggle, right? Sometimes you are uh, the type who has less control over what you do, but some people are trying to transition, and it's a work in progress, right? So I wish you all the best in that. And uh, uh, Iktifa was like, no, you're not always like that. He's, he's working on himself, that's why. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, enough time for two more. So I would like to invite the next speaker. Who would like to try it? Uh, can you hear me? Or... Yes, Danish. All right. <laughs> so Danish, your topic is, when I accomplish something, I often feel it wasn't really me who did it. When I accomplish something, I often feel it wasn't really me who did it? Danish Akhtar. So I'm supposed to agree or disagree yes. on this, right? Yes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Now, the topic that I've been given today is... What was it again? When I accomplish something, I often feel it wasn't really me who did it. When I accomplish something, it wasn't me who really... Who I feel who really did it. Truth be told, I disagree on this statement. Why? When you achieve something, obviously, you feel that you've put in a lot of hard work, you've put in a lot of effort. After all, there is no success without failure. Sometimes we go through so many trials and tribulations just to get it. For example, Elon Musk, his SpaceX crashed thousands of times but did he give up despite the millions that he spent in the end the rocket finally took up therefore while we cannot deny that it was his team also had a part in it however it was this perseverance of Elon Musk himself that's why and was he satisfied obviously he definitely was satisfied it took millions of tries for me I would like to relate to the same thing after all Determination is a prelude to success. If you're not determined, you are not able to stand up and struggle, you will not. For example, let's say I had this project. It was a teamwork. I was elected as the group leader of this law and society project. Well, definitely, I thank my team. However, I do feel a great sense of accomplishment. Why do I feel a great sense of accomplishment? Because at the end of the day, it is all it, that counts. You have been struggling for weeks, getting the project from the presenting it up to the management, to delivering it, and to assess the post 
project term, the close project, what's the term? Yes, the post project after effects. And from that after effects, you know where you can improve on. Therefore, while it is not perfect, however, at least we know we have done our very best and it was a success. After all, as I said, there is no success without failure. If there is no such thing, after all, if you all can tell me, I'm sure some people definitely have not failed their and maths papers or that. However, how did we get to that success? It is through the hard work and perseverance. When you do the questions, obviously, you don't get it right first time. Push and push and push. Therefore, in a nutshell, well, I feel that it is not me who accomplish it, I disagree. While I credit my team, however, at the end of the day, is I feel satisfied that I have done my best. That is what matters most. With that, back to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you so much to Toastmaster Danish and uh, the, the point on ad math, right? You know, I totally agree. I'm, I'm not good at it. But, you know, it is because I am not good at it because of myself, not because of the environment. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, final speaker. Remember, here in Toastmasters, we speak to express ourselves, not to impress others. Uh, see what I did there? So for the last speaker, I hope that you will take this opportunity as a platform to practice speech. Anyone from the floor? I guess I give it a shot then. All right, Yuming. Hi there. Your, your topic is, I do what I do because I am. I do what I do because I am. You may. Good evening, everyone. And today I'm going to present about my opinion on I do what I do because it is what I am. Right, Kao Yang? Okay. So I'm a, I'm a quite a uh, quite an individualistic person in the sense that I like to do my own way. I hardly ask other people's help. And also one of the reasons why am I studying in this profession, which is maths, which is by far one of the most individualistic subject on earth. But let's put this in another perspective is that some it's okay to look into other people's uh, approach because it is very important. Um, indeed, um, we, we, are, we have our own flaws and likewise, so does everyone and likewise we not just flaws everyone has their own uh, expertise and so on and so on it's okay you, you shouldn't be afraid to feel that oh uh, it's not it doesn't feel it don't feel so bad when you're like oh you have the impression you're going to copy somebody else's work um, likewise we also wouldn't want to uh, feel get the impression that oh you, what you're doing is not original or whatever we do is merely uh, inferior parts of other people's work or some so on and so on. Uh, that, is, that is what I, I feel in general. But the thing is, the thing is that um, when in this world, especially uh, in the times like this, a globe, in a globalized, globalized world, which we see right now, um, Teamwork is very, very important. I have worked in, in corporate world for quite some time and I have learned a lot from them is that we have to work together. We not necessarily have to sacrifice your own individuality for the sake of uh, sake of following other people's approaches because we should be open instead. You know, we should, okay, we, we take in whatever what we, we, uh, is, we believe is, which will improve us. And likewise, we can change. Uh, that is what we are. We are not perfect. And the reason for the real reason that we are not perfect is the fact that we can learn to change, change for the better. And as the saying goes, be a better man than a own father. That is actually where the phrase comes from. So um, that, so wow, it is great to be more in individualistic and being a, doing your own way you know it is great but it is no harm trying you know uh, learn what is learn the best of other people and and 
that is also a good thing and you can take away a lot of things from them too. Uh, so in short, yes and no, perhaps. Back to you, Kao. Thank you so much. Uh, our final speaker, Toastmaster of the evening, Chong Yu Ming. Uh, really, uh, some word, wise words to impart there. Um, so I hope that uh, fellow Toastmasters and ladies and gentlemen, with that, I hope you had some takeaway message. So this session is Table Topics. It's a opportunity for you to change for the better and practice uh, speech. So before I go, I would like to uh, share with all of you that uh, this is a vote. So I would like to ask all of you uh, to move your attention to probably a screen popping up really, really soon with everybody's name. Okay. Uh, Zoom Master is working really, really hard any moment now. So once it popped out, please do remember to vote for your favorite table topics. Okay. So with that, I'm going to pass my session back to the Toastmaster of the evening. Toastmaster of the evening. Oh, hi there. Thank you. Um, so I think thank you so much uh, to Kao Yang to be a volunteer to volunteer to be a table topics master for today and introduce us very very interesting topics. It's been a pleasure to hear from him. So right now, um, now it's time for us to have a five minute break. So uh, before we have a five minute break, let us have a quick photo sessions. Um, Ting, is everything ready from your end? Yes. Um, can everyone please turn on your camera? So Hong Jin, Isaac, Jun Kang, Chloe. Yeah, I'll give you 10 seconds for that. Okay, it seems like everyone is turning on the camera. So let's have a group photo together. So in the count of three, two, one, smile. Okay, let me take the photo. Okay, one more. Three, two, one, smile. Okay. Okay, one more, one last one. A funny pose, funny pose. Three, two, one, hey. All right, that's it for the photo <laughs> session. Thank you, everyone, and back to you, Toastmaster of the evening. Break comments. Okay. Yeah, break. EJ, you cut your hair. Is it? <laughs> I kind of like your topics, huh? Very interesting. Quite philosophical in nature. Yeah, oh, that, that's because I pluck it directly from one of the research papers <laughs> on the psychology. Oh, <laughs> it's a question there. It's good, it's good. <laughs> you that. You've yeah. all been given questionnaire questions. <laughs> yeah, that one is the questionnaire, right? Yes, yes. Uh, there is like a scale whether you agree or not. So I, I usually choose either the extreme uh, left or the extreme right. <laughs> I mean, it, it, at least in psychology, if it's psychiatry, that's even worse. <laughs> but like uh, for this, it's just sharing. La. You can't really do much with just one question. But uh, I think it's therapeutic la, to share a little bit la, on what you... Yeah, uh, It's quite a fresh, refreshing one because I thought people would do like a very typical topic. <laughs> Actually, I'm wanting to do table topics. I want to do like... Uh, I heard there's a latest trend you know say okay you're going to have a complete the story with a sentence you need have a one part of a sentence then i walk to the school then you have to continue the rest oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we have that before yeah make a speech with this with this as the first sentence or the last sentence or middle of it uh, i don't know i mean that would be much it's more cool interesting la. it's cool la. it's cool to do that la. because i remember there's one time i did that um 
basically I ask all the speakers to continue. Let's say for example, right, I start with the first sentence. It was a fine morning. So everyone right had to chip in three minutes of their story lah. So it's just a continuation of the story. Ah, <coughs> I see. Speaking about about schools, right? I noticed the syllabus nowadays, especially for SPM and PD3, they really discontinue on storytelling lah. Especially on Malay lah. Malay semua fakta lah. I don't know lah, but then the thing is like. Ah, macam, I I have my sister is nine years younger than me, so I I'm quite aware about the syllabus. So that's the thing. The only subject that do talk a bit about story is actually English and Mandarin. Malay is so more fakta. So you have to say what are the steps, uh, what are the reasons and everything fakta lah. The only difference, the subtle difference that okay, I want you to write in the form of speech. I mean, uh, chip, uh, or in the form of speech, or just write a simple article. Like but no more karangan, no more essays. SPM lah, especially. No, no. What I mean is like they don't give practice essays at school. Uh, I'm not sure lah. But if you ask the teachers, they will be incentivized to give fakta lah because after all, exams come out hundred percent fakta. Why would they want to come out that? Why would they want the students to do others? Then creativity dies lah. If you want, I mean, the teacher could have fun with it. If you want to do that, but I'm I'm talking about in exams to the the other champion, the other champion, ah. Huh? Oh, no more champion, ah. Hmm, no. So story That's is sad. yeah sad. I bet felt very sad. It's not not great lah, because I know people who are good in writing ah uh, in Japan ah uh, it will be not helping, especially as them to keep writing fakta lah. The jala social is quite common one. Jala social, wawasan dopo dopo lo. Wawasan dopo lo. Now we wait. Wawasan dopo lo is during my time. During my time, yes. Wawasan dopo lima puno. Ah, mungkin lah, mungkin ya. Yeah, now is... I see waiting for S D twenty thirty. The next part is more. Ah yeah, S D S D D. Yeah, and then that is saya sebuah pencil, saya sebuah kasut. Ah, uh, that is, uh, not sure about <coughs> UPSR lah. But I heard UPSR is going to be teach out. I also don't know. Ah, uh, yeah, going. expected and PP three and now I'm not too sure on PP three. Now we are going examless. <coughs> yeah, they actually I think they wanted to do something like Finland, you know. Yeah, but Finland, but here is not Finland lah. I don't know how how it's going to pan out lah. That's why more and more of my friends right are uh, opting to send their kids to international school. Uh, maybe. Uh... Well, thank you, everyone. Now the five minutes break time is now over, and we will now continue with the second part for today's meeting, which is the prepare speech session. <coughs> and I will now pass the control over to our Toastmaster of Evening for today's meeting. Toastmaster Yuman, over to you. Thank you. Is my speaker on? Is my speaker on? Yes. 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 Okay. Great. So yes. our, our intermission is finally over. So let us hear two prepared speeches from our two lovely members. Oh dear! What happened? So we will have two members who's going to prepare their. Prepared to make their speeches, project speeches, uh, Toastmasters speeches. Uh, one is first will be st it starts with EJ and followed by Itifa Rafi. So for EJ, um, he will be doing his first level project uh, titled Introduction to Vocal Variety and Body Language. And his, the title of his speech is Why You Procrastinate and How to Get Things Done. That's a very interesting title here. Uh, Kenneth, as an evaluator to EJ's speech for today, would you kindly read out the purpose statement of his project? Okay. The purpose, the purpose for this project is for the member to practice using vocal variety or body language to enhance your speech. Thank you very much, Kenneth. Uh, as for general evaluator Danish, I would like to 
would like you to read out the notes to the evaluator, Kenneth. The floor is yours. You mean I'm supposed to... Read the notes to the evaluator, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, the, you mean the evaluator, is it the person... Who notes to be... evaluator, yes. Uh, it's in, actually in the agenda. Okay, so therefore I'm just supposed to read the purpose statement, right? No, purpose statement is done. Now you're going to read the notes to the evaluator. Oh, uh, okay, of... okay, okay. Just give me a moment. I've got to open up the agenda again. Oh. Just give me a moment. Okay. All right. Uh, just give me a moment here. I'm trying to get the agenda. Where is that link? For this, because I'm not using my normal PC. Therefore, I'm using a different PC. Okay, notes to the... Notes for the evaluator for Kenneth. All right, there it is. Notes for the... All right, notes for the evaluator. This is for Toastmaster Kenneth. Is it not for everyone, right? It is for the evaluator, so you have okay, to read okay, out. Yeah. Mm. All right. So to the notes for the evaluator, during the completion of this project, the member has spent time learning about and practicing their body language including gestures and other non-verbal communication along with their vocal variety, including pace, tone, pitch, and volume. And do I have to read about this speech or it's okay? I think you better read about this speech. Yeah. All right. Now, the details about this speech, the member will present a well-organized speech on any topic. Watch for the member's awareness of their intentional and unintentional movement and body language. Note distracting movements as well as movements that enhance the speech. The speech may be humorous, informal, or any style the member chooses. Informational, I think. Use this evaluation for speakers who have indicated they want to be evaluated on body language or body language and vocal variety. On body language or body language, vocal variety. If the member has indicated they only want to be evaluated on vocal variety, please use the speech profile available on Basecamp. With that, that's all from me. Back to you, Toastmaster, the evening. Thank you. Thank you, Danish, for reading out the notes to the evaluator, uh, which who is Kenneth. So, EJ, is everything ready for you? Uh, wait, on, I everything? share the screen. I need to share the screen. Yes. Great. Hey, where, where? Okay, uh, could you put the spotlight on him right now? EJ? Uh, yes, EJ is spotlighted. Oh, okay. So EJ, uh, is everything is ready? All put uh, on your side? Yeah, I'm ready. That's great. So EJ, the floor is yours. Okay. So today, I'm going to talk about why you procrastinate and how to get things done. So before I start my speech, I would like to ask everyone here a question. Have you ever procrastinate? Comment one if you have and comment two if you haven't. Yes, la. Okay, okay. Okay, so as a student, I had a lot of assignment to do. Normally, the assignment will be given in week three or week four, and everyone will have at least uh, six weeks of time to do the assignment. But me, I'm a procrastinator. When I receive my assignment, I would just leave it there and forget, forget about it until two days day before the deadline. And I would be stressed out because I couldn't finish my assignment on time. And when I asked my friend, Joshua Lim Kim Yu, like, hey, Joshua, did you finish your assignment? And every single time, the answer I get is yes, yes, yes. And in fact, he would finish his assignment three weeks before the due date. Like, wow. So I wonder, what is the difference between a non-procrastinator and a procrastinator? Like, in other words, what is the difference between Joshua and I? Therefore, I did a research. Let's see what I found here. Okay, so 
Here is a MRI scan of a non-procrastinator brain. And this is the brain of a procrastinator. Okay, well, it's turned out that I had a monkey living inside my head. And in fact, every procrastinator has. When there is something I need to do and the deadline is far away, the monkey will take control of my mind. And instead of do, uh, being productive and doing things that's, that is beneficial for me in the long run, the monkey will choose to do whatever thing that is easy and fun. For instance, if you let the monkey choose between preparing a speech for a Toastmaster club or watch YouTube video <laughs> for four hours straight, I can guarantee the monkey will choose to watch the YouTube video 100%. But <coughs> mine is not controlled by the monkey all the time. Well, it's turned out the monkey is afraid of the deadline and it will run away whenever the deadline is around the corner. Well, fun fact, I have booked today's speaking slot with Yu Ming almost one month ago. But then when he came to ask me what is my topic around three days ago, I still haven't, I don't even know what I'm going to present. So this is when the monkey panic and run away, leaving me alone here with only a few days to prepare for the speech. Well, of course I managed to finish preparing my speech or else I won't even be here. Okay, so how can we stop procrastinating and get things done. Well, we know that the mon what the monkey like and what the monkey hate. So maybe we can work from there. Hmm. So the monkey likes something that is easy and fun. So how can we make our job easy? Or in other words, how can we make difficult tasks easy, easier to do? Okay, we can make our task easier to do by deconstruct it into many smaller parts. When you break the task into smaller components, then you will find it easier to do. For example, if I need to prepare for my speech for the next meeting, then tonight maybe I will just think of the topic. And then tomorrow I will just write for the first paragraph and the day after tomorrow, I will write for the second paragraph and so on. Just divide the job that you need to do into smaller parts to make the job easier. Okay, so next, the monkey love doing things that is fun. So how can we make our job become more fun to do? Well, the idea is use the reward system in the game. Well, when we kill the boss in the game, we will get some rewards, right? Same concept apply here. Imagine doing job is like uh, killing the, the boss in the game and after you have done your job, you will get the reward. You can reward yourself with anything you like. A bar of chocolate, uh, watch YouTube for five minutes, five minutes only, eh? okay, or uh, even go out for a walk. And believe me, you will get edited to get things done. Okay, when we are doing our job, we need to remove anything that is easy and fun. For example, our phone, our tablet, and, and so on. Okay, when we when we need to keep the, we need to keep those things that is easy and fun from our surrounding, and we keep it in a place that we will not see it. Because when we are being productive, we don't want to get attracted. Moving on. What are monkey in, in your mind most afraid of? The monkey hate deadline. So we can set our own deadline to get things done. Just now I mentioned that we, we can break the things into smaller tasks, right? Well, we can just add the deadline into those smaller tasks and it will do the trick. Give yourself a time limit to do the task so that the monkey will be scared and run away and as a result, you will stop procrastinating. In short, just add the deadline so that it will give you some motivation to get things done. So in a nutshell, remember 
DDRR method to stop procrastinating. So D for deconstruct. So first of all, we deconstruct the difficult job into smaller tasks. And second D is deadline. We set our own deadline into those smaller tasks. And then when we are doing those tasks, we remove, we remove things that can attract our attention. And lastly, we reward ourselves after we have done the job. Okay, so by using the DDRR method, we can learn how to control the monkey in our mind. And I hope everyone here can use the DDRR method because the day you stop procrastinating is the day you become successful. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you so much to EJ for sharing his tip, uh, the tips, uh, the DGRR method to stop procrastinating. As a chronic procrastinator myself, it's quite an interesting one. After all, everyone is tempted to watch YouTube, you know, for hours. For me, I love to watch, um, fun fact, I used to watch Uncharted 4 for four hours straight when I was in uni in UK. That is quite a sad thing to do. <laughs> um, so for the next speaker will be Iktifa Rafi. Hold on, I'm going to... The next speaker will be Iktifa Rafi and the type, and you will be doing the level three project titled Negotiate the Best Outcome. And the title is Influencing a Mosquito. As someone who was, got bitten by mosquito so many times, even my parents joke that I have sweet blood. Uh, I don't know why my blood is so sweet. I, I don't know. I'm not diabetic. I don't know what happened to me. So, so it says, it goes like this. Have you ever thought on how to talk to mosquitoes? Wow. Or how mosquitoes talk to each other? That is a very interesting premise to his speech uh, by Itifa Rafi here. So, um, Chloe, as an evaluator, I'd like you to read the purpose statement of his speech, Chloe. Yes, sure, thank you. The purpose of this project is for the member to learn about different types of negotiation and the strategies that can be used when negotiating. Back to you, Yuming. Thank you so much, Chloe. Now, uh, as for general, general evaluator Danish, could you read out the notes to evaluator Chloe? My pleasure, to Toastmaster Ming Yuming. All right, to the evaluate, speech evaluator, Chloe. Notes for the evaluator. During the completion of this project, the member spent time learning about different negotiation, negotiation styles and strategies and reflected on the past or future negotiation in his or her life. About this speech, the member will deliver a well-organized speech about a nego negotiation in his or her life. The speech may be humorous, informational or crafted in any style that appeals to the member and supports the speech content. The speech should not be a report on the content of the negotiate the best outcome project. With that, <coughs> you, Toastmaster Evening Yuming. Thank you so much, Danish, for reading out notes to evaluator Chloe. So, Itifa, is everything on ready? Mics on, videos on, yep. everything is yep. in order? Yep. Great. Uh, I already removed that. Yeah, no problem. So is everything okay? <coughs> yeah. Okay, great. So uh, wait, hold on. I, because I, I So well, let us welcome Iktifa to share with us how to influence a mosquito by means of the thing known as OV trap. Iktifa, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Yumi, for the kind introduction. Now, <clears throat> My first day in IMO Jalan Pahang, the HOD of the Entomology Research Center, which is the main area where we study insects, come to me and say that, Itifa, in six months of your internship, I want you to create a new OV trap. And this will be your internship project. Don't create it, uh, you fail to do it, you will get an F straight for me. <clears throat> and I was thinking, dear God, and everything that is holy. And that will be the shortest speech ever in UMTMC. <clears throat> so what I did instead was, I sit down with the HOD, with the head of the department, 
and I negotiated the project. So I asked the doctor, Prof, what do you want me to do? Well, we want you to do an ovitrap, a new and improved ovitrap, so that we can eradicate Aedes mosquitoes. Prof, you only have six months? Yes, yes, it's okay. You have six months. <clears throat> it's enough. Six months is enough. <sighs> Prof, does this project entice me to go on site? Oh, yes, yes, you have to go on site. You have to capture new mosquitoes. Our mosquitoes culture that are dead already. You have to go and capture new mosquitoes. Prof, <clears throat> what exactly you want me to do with the mosquitoes? How should I track them? Oh, well, you can use three methods. One, using the physics aspect of attracting mosquitoes. Number two, using chemistry to attract them. Number three, to use biology to attract them. Um, Prof, six months, six months only. Then I sit down. Then I, he listed all the projects, all the objectives, which was like half a page. And I told him that, Prof, in six months, I can promise you to do a prototype. I will not go for on sites. I will not go for on field testing. I will not go and capture new mosquitoes to breed. I will use whatever we have in IMR. Prof said, okay, Tifa, I agree with you. You just go ahead and do whatever you want to do. <clears throat> and I also told him that for six months, Prof, I need 2K to, to be my salary. Then he said, and I'm, that's what we always pay the GRA in IMR. 2K is enough for you to do everything. No, no, not prof, not, not 2K for everything. 2K for each month. Then prof said, ah, okay, 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 can, 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 can. As long as you do the prototype. Okay, prof. So I follow what Hermione always do. We start to go to the library and I start to digest all the journals in the library. I read and read and read. And guess what? After one month, I know everything about Edis. I know how to differentiate a male Edis and a female Edis. Very simple. You just look at their Proboscus, the male is a bit brushy and the female is sharp. <clears throat> then, out with my knowledge, I went to Atong, which is in Bangi, and tell them that, hey, look, I'm going to do this project, which is going to see which frequency that a mosquito will be attracted to. And I need your bunker. I am, sorry. Just to recap back, IMR is Institute of Medical Research. It's previously at Jalan Bahau. <clears throat> and GRA is Graduate Research Assistant. So when I was in Atom, I told the lady in charge, I said, ma'am, I need your bunker. I need that bunker that's been isolated by, not only by isolated from three satellites, but also by the satellites. Then the PIC said that, sorry, it's fully booked. No, no, cannot. No, no. Then I said, ma'am, I'm doing a research for the betterment of Malaysia. You will be remembered as one of the heroes to eradicate Eddie's. Ma'am, can. Then the ma'am, the, the, the doctor said that, yes, you can have two wins. Ma'am, Malaysia will not forget you. Another two wins. So I have a month to do my research there. And what I did was, I bring all, I bring my mosquitoes first, I separate them into females and males, and I brought them to Bangi on my MyV. On the, in the bunker, <clears throat> I start testing them with other frequencies. High frequencies as high as 1,000 and as low as 20. Good thing that after I subject them to the high frequencies and low frequencies, I kill them off. So they will not harm in any way. <clears throat> then I settled in a month. I settled my fifth part. The next part is chemistry. Chemistry is very simple. It's very straightforward. I have to use this. Can anyone see this? Basically, it's an alphotometer. So I will put the mosquitoes here. And I will put the chemicals here. And the mosquitoes will fly and choose what they like. <clears throat> and the, chem the compounds that I use is all lipid based. So as you know that lipids, they have different change, change. Some, some are like one chain molecules of carbon 
and some has 20 chains of molecule, carbon molecule in their structure. And lastly, is the biological part. What water they like? Do they like mineral water? Do they like tap water? Fresh water? Sea water? Salt water? Or saline? Then after four months, I gathered all the animals together and I produced my ovitrack, which has a constant frequency of 200 hertz. And inside it, I dissolve a compound of C17, a common chain of 17, to attract mosquitoes. And I tell you, the mosquitoes were zooming to the ovi trap and putting themselves into it. <clears throat> yes. And you may ask, how is the best way to influence a mosquito? Well, through my research, I got two outcomes, three outcomes actually. One from the physics part, you just need to put a frequency of 230 mega uh, of 230 hertz. Number two, slatter we use ourselves with a C17 lotion. I mean a lipid with C17 chain, not like putting blood of human there, cannot, it won't work. Just put C17. And also the third one is use tap water. And that's it. Back to you, Ming, as the Toastmasters of the day. Thank you so much, Iktipa. <coughs> I hope you will make a breakthrough in your research and make Malaysia proud. I mean, make us all proud. As after all, uh, Eddie's mosquitoes are everywhere. Even right now, they say they can even fly up to the trough floor due to climate change. So um, right now, that concludes uh, the prepared speeches sessions for today. And right now, we'd like to recall in our general evaluator, Danish. Danish, the floor is yours. Thank you, Toastmaster Yunmeng. Greetings, everyone. I'm Danish, and now I'll be taking over the next part of this session. Now, in Toastmasters, Usually in my club, we always have something that I like to call PSTTE, which is prepared speeches, table topics, and evaluations. However, is in UM, it is TTPST. Now we finish the TT, which is the table topics. PS is also down. Now, not down and out. However, we are already done that. Now we are at E. Yeah, now we are at E, which is the evaluations. And this is what I would like to call hot off the presses. After all, evaluations, you're being directly evaluated by your evaluators. Hot off the presses, real life reports now. We are live. With that, let me call upon the first prepared speech, the first evaluator for the first prepared speech speaker, who is none other than where is that number? All right. Who is none, none other than where is it? Excuse me, uh, none other than Toast, the table topic evaluator, Toast Visionary Communications one, Toastmaster Jun Hong. Now, uh, apologies on that. We Since we had a table topic session first, I will call upon the table topic evaluators, so whereas in my club, it's always done after a prepared speech. Therefore, I'll, in according to the agenda, the first evaluator will be the table topics evaluator and who is none other than visionary communications one toastmaster jun hong toastmaster jun hong the stage is yours thank you mr general evaluator toastmaster danish so a slight hint before starting my evaluation if i recall correctly for the table topic master you may need to adjust your timing a bit because i heard that the first and a half minute is started with green, which is supposedly the first minute is green, one and a half minutes amber, second minute red, set two and a half minutes onwards is over time. So this is a part where you may need to fix a bit in order to prevent confusion for the table topic speaker. So we have the first brave soul, Toastmaster Joshua. I often feel like I control the things I do. So the first of all, he stated his stance, stating that I'm unsure about this at all. So he started talking about how his morning routine will start. First, he may just lay on his bed, scroll on his phone, procrastinate, or forces himself to wake up and do all the things he needs to get, get it done. So, and the next thing he mentions about the dilemma 
Should I have just two slices of bread? Or should I take another piece of cake and additional biscuits to complement my breakfast? So in this breakfast part, he did a very good job in saying, I have control because I know how much I do need to eat. Am I that hungry? Should I eat that much? So maybe a little challenge for you, you may add in a bit of an animation such as, I don't feel a bit hungry, but I feel quite hungry. Should I have two slices of bread and complement myself with a slice of cake and more biscuits? Second table topic speaker, Toastmaster Kenner, I see a stranger in the mirror. First of all, he mentions he felt like a stranger as he feels he's contradicting with his own personality. So good try, first of all, in interacting with the audiences by asking them an open-ended question and tell them to vote one for yes, and two for no. So maybe during this time, while waiting, you may do some multitasking by explaining your stance. For example, I'm unsure about this and blah, blah, blah. Then he mentioned about his inconfidence within himself that causes him to disrupt his timetable and schedule. For example, by revising the same chapter again and again. Then I would like to give a tip for you, Kenneth. Maybe you may want to compare yourself today and yesterday. After, after all the things you do yesterday and the brand new self you woke up today, do you feel yesterday, the Kenneth yesterday, is, it, is he a stranger to me today? Then we have the third speaker, Toastmaster Ani. She started off by mentioning the external factors such as the surroundings that caused her lost her emotions, in control of her emotions. Then she mentioned the maturity of her EQ is still in progress to achieve calmness, especially being a teacher. So she is great in relating her current occupation with the topic. She is encouraged to explain more on what are the actions, for example, the students true a chalk on her table that make her, drove her crazy, drove her up to the wall. And last but not least, she gave a really good take home message to inform people around on one's boundaries. Fourth speaker, we have Toastmaster Ming Tan. I feel, the, I feel that I am not really, I'm rarely myself. First of all, he straight up tell us who he is. He is a kind person. So he does not know how to decline or reject any offer, whatever offer, even though he knows he is gonna perform that act unwillingly. Due to such trait, he is occasionally being himself, rarely as he wishes to please others. So for this, he is encouraged to act as two different personalities to increase the attraction of the speech. For example, I would like to go to that dinner, but there are too many people that I do not know. I am not willing to go. You should go. Something you see a contrast of two personalities. Then last but not least, a good take home message by saying, he asks others to work on being a better self while he is doing this as his progress. Fifth speaker, we have Toastmaster Danish. When I accomplished something, it wasn't really me who did it. So I really like the moment he digested the, the topic, he's straight to the point. I am not agreeing on this statement. Why? He started off by mentioning the determination and the perseverance of Elon Musk to try and try again in order to be successful as how he is today. Then 
he is also good in sharing his personal experience, for example, handling his project and how he gives credit to all his other teammates. Maybe a little challenge for yourself, the variety of connectives can be practiced, such as however and therefore was often used. Maybe you should say something, maybe I would suggest although blah, 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 but this, this, this. Something like that to make the connectives a bit more smoother. Last but not least, we have our Toastmaster Yumi presenting his topic. I do what I do because I am. He is immediately able to relate his studies and assignments by mentioning the statement, statement it is good to embrace individuality after I have experienced all these work cultures, I know teamwork is mandatory and crucial. So he asked us to give, he gives us a really good message. We are not perfect because we constantly need to change. So that's all for me. Thank you. And back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Tabletop Evaluator. Now, Toastmaster Jun Hong did a great job evaluating all the prepared, sorry, all the table topic table topic speakers. And can we give a round of applause to all the table topic speakers? Because it is not easy to give a table topic. After all, there was this quote by, I believe it was a uh, Mark Twain. He said this: If you ask me to give a speech, I can. I can do it within a day. However, if you ask me to give an impromptu speech, I will need a week to write it. After all, because impromptu, especially table topic, you have to think off your feet. Unlike a prepared speech where you have time to rehearse, in table topic, you only got like 30 seconds to cobble up whatever you want to speak and then speak it out in front of the audience. Therefore, good, great job on that. And of course, those of Hong had really valid points. I love the background, which was a very motivational virtual background. And also, I love that he had a lot of hand gestures. We also aspire to use that kind of hand gestures, which are not unwanted gestures. After all, we know too much that of a good thing can be a bad thing. Therefore, it is great they had, a, they had just the right amount of hand gestures and it worked perfectly. That, thank you, Toastmaster Jin Hong. Now, let me call, a, with that said, now finally, I can call upon the evaluator for the first prepared speech speaker. Now, for the I would like to call upon the evaluator for the, the first prepared speech speaker, who is none other than Toastmaster Kenneth, effective coaching one, Toastmaster Kenneth. Toastmaster Kenneth, the stage is yours. Okay, mic test. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, sorry, wrong mode, wrong mode. Okay, uh, Mark Tess, can you hear me and can you see me clearly? Yes. Yes, we can see you and we can hear you. Very nice. And let's rock to my true and evaluate session. So first of all, congratulate EJ for presenting his speech, his level one speech. So I know, okay, let's put my hand for him. And I know that he has four more levels to go, but I guess if we put effort into it, then it will be a breeze. So that's, now let's chill and evaluate. In this speech is why you procrastinate and how to get this done. So to be honest, I procrastinated until now. I just completed this time. Okay, just joking. So what we can learn from this speech? Two P's, okay? Not three P, two P. Points and perception. EJ included a perfect induction, which includes questioning techniques. He asked the audience, do you procrastinate? And he shared his personal experiences at the beginning of his speech. Meanwhile, his points and his ideas are also supported by evidence and real statistics. Next, he also uses visuals or pictures to be simple. Visuals of pictures are, and are effective tools to represent abstract concepts. 
For example, he used a cute monkey to represent our thoughts. He used game images, if I'm not mistaken. Is it from Clash of Clans or Clash Royals? If I forgot to, I forget about it already. To represent amazing ideas and flowcharts to explain the point of breaking down complex <laughs> stuff. So now, what DJ can do better is the 2G, or known as GG. Okay, not the typical GG that we, we say when we mess up things, but the first G is going in, go with impact, the second one is gestures. End your speech with three S, short, sweet, and simple ending statement instead of providing another long point. That is because an SSS ending statement might promote a stronger impact to the audiences. Next is gestures. You maintain a constant eye contact with the camera so that the audience might feel that you're talking to them. And move further away like this from the camera to show that you're performing your hand gestures. So now I challenge you to continue bringing powerful impact with your personal experiences sharing and influences with your insightful ideas. So ladies and gentlemen, the key takeaways from this speech is to present your speech with SS, smile and strength. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Toastmaster Kenneth, for the comprehensive evaluation. Now, I'm not going to comment on the performance of the prepared speech speakers because I believe that the evaluators have given enough points on them for to improve on. Therefore, I will only comment on the performance of the prepared speech evaluators after all the prepared speech evaluations have come to an end. With that said, let me call upon the second prepared speech evaluator who is none other than all the way from Master Jaya Toast Masters Club, the home club in District 102 of the newly crowned third place winner of the World Championship of Public Speaking that was held in Nashville, Mas Mahate. And to that, I would like to call upon a member from that club, who is none other than Presentation Mastery 3, Toastmaster Chloe Lau, to evaluate Toastmaster Ikifa's speech. Toastmaster Chloe Lau, the stage is yours. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Yes, I would like also thanks Toastmaster Itifa to share with us this so interesting mosquito traps. I believe the success of your this internship project could benefit human beings a lot, especially me. I have the diabetes blood. I don't know why I attract I attract mosquitoes a lot. Make sure you give me the trap also. So what I like about your speech is you have a very clear transition and well-structured speech. For example, at the beginning, you state very clearly the requirement of your internship project. Then you move on to the negotiation with your profession, professor and the implementation of your project and the end, the success of your inventation. As a conclusion, you also restate the ways to influence a mosquito. Quite interesting. And what I like about this, your speech is your natural vocal and the gesture, especially when you mention really a pro. 2000, 2000 is not only engage us as an audience and also engage the sense of humor. I love it very much. For the area of improvement, I would like to focus on the purpose of this project. So as you can see in the evaluation form, the purpose of this project is to analyze a past or upcoming negotiation. So I expect the speech is more on the section that you negotiate with your professor. But somehow you could see that in your project, only the first part of your, of your speech is related to this one. So I would suggest that throughout the speech, you focus more on this one. For example, the first one, what you can do is to reflect on that particular negotiation with your professor on the negotiation styles and the strategies that you adopt. 
And secondly, what was your ideal outcome? What I could see is that your pros was quite, was quite kind. Just say, agree, yes, agree. So I can suggest that maybe you can add some challenges, the struggles inside your negotiation that you can show us what you have already uh, uh, adopted and your approaches. Back to the negotiation section, what I love is the first one, you, ca you clarify the goals from your professor by asking, Pro, what do you actually want me to do? So this is very good. And secondly, you clarify the requirements. Six months, uh, ready six months, go on the side. So this is the good part for the parallel uh, negotiation that you define the goals and the requirements. And end up, you also state your, your, your requirements, no on field testing and request 2K. So from here, you can add the chairs. The process might say, no, no, no. And the, what is the uh, negotiation styles or strategy you adopt? So my, so all in all, I love your speech. It's very interesting with the in, uh, interesting story and your natural vocal and gesture. My suggestion is focus on the purpose of the project. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Toastmaster Chloe, for that comprehensive evaluation report on Toastmaster Itifa speech. Now, the for my evaluation on the performance of the evaluators for the first prepared speech speech for the first prepared speech evaluator, Toastmaster Kenneth. I love that slides. Honestly speaking, I really love that slides. And it's really good when you have slides. It reminds me when DTM Ricky Su, yes, distinguished Toastmaster Ricky Su used slides and DTM Srini Vas from my district used slides. Because when you use slides, especially if you're in an online setting, it makes it easier for people to get the message because let's face it, in an online meeting, sometimes the audio may be lagging or the connection may be bad. Hence, we may not be able to capture what is being said verbally by the evaluator. Therefore, slides are a really good visual aid to help drive that message to not just the evaluator, but also to the members of the, of the audience. Now for the second evaluator, Toastmaster Chloe's speech performance, of course, stellar. Toastmaster Chloe had all the points. She managed to go down to the nitty gritty of Toastmaster Itifa's speech and point out the key points that Toastmaster Itifa can improve on. That therefore is great. Only thing is maybe you could work on the positioning because I noticed your hands sort of disappeared a little bit. However, that is the disadvantage of virtual backgrounds. Therefore, maybe you have to adjust the positioning of your hand, especially when moving your hand during the hand gestures as virtual background can be a little bit distracting sometimes. All right, with that said, congratulations to the perfect, the first prepared speech speaker. I love the first prepared speech, especially the sets. I noticed it was the Venn diagram and yet the colors of the Olympics, just wonderful. I really loved it. And the second speaker, Itifa, yes, all the best in your project. I hope it's more successful. Who knows, it could be the best thing after well, the Wobakia reading program. With that, with that said, now let me call upon the grammarian for tonight's meeting. Is it the grammarian? Let me go back to the agenda. Yes, let me call upon the tech team, which is the timer, our counter grammarian. However, we'll call it upon in the order in the agenda. Therefore, now I'd like to call upon the grammarian who is none other than the club president presentation, Master Yitri, Toastmaster Lim Ming Kang. Toastmaster Ming Kang, the stage is yours. Thank you. Let me share my screen. Mm. Okay, so here is the grammar's report by the grammarian. First of all, word of the day usage, prelude. I managed to capture one usage from Toastmaster of the evening from Yu Ming. One from Toastmaster Ani, our guest from KPKL Toastmaster Club. So two, word of the day usage from two members, prelude. Moving on to outstanding language usage, I managed to capture a lot. Those that I highlighted with green is the word that I like. Uh, first, forgive me for being pedantic by Toastmaster of the Evening. I control the things I do from Joshua. Compliment with two slides of red from Joshua. 
a sense of secureness from Joshua. I don't perceive myself as a from someone. There's no success without failure. Uh, a good quote. Sacrifice individuality to follow others' approaches from TME. Stellar performance from the GE. So these are outstanding language quotes, words, sayings, thoughts that I have managed to capture. Moving on to improper language, only five. I can see the quality of uh, language for today's meeting is really, really high. First option is go to toilet. First option is going to toilet. I'm not doing what I can do it fully. I'm not doing what I am capable. Gyasu is a good word. It means fear of losing out. It's a cultural word in Singapore and Malaysia. Did you finish? We can use have you finished instead. Activities like uh, watch YouTube. Instead, activities like watching YouTube. So these are grammarian's reports. And thank you. Back to the GE. Thank you, Toastmaster Ming Kang, for the comprehensive evaluation report. Now, Toastmaster Ming Kang definitely followed up on the usage of grammar, grammar from those which are incorrect and, of course, those which are stellar, which are. Yeah. We have the grammarian report. After all, we have the good usage of words, quotes, and phrases. Therefore, congrats to you. And I like their slide, the word prelude. It's great that, especially a grammarian, this is important because sometimes the word of the day, people cannot really guess why it is. Not only do you have a virtual background for the word of the day prelude, you also have the short definition of that word because especially in a virtual setting, we always encourage programmers to have a separate virtual background with the word of the day. Hence, people are more aware of it and can use it more often. Therefore, kudos to you on that. Now, let me call upon the next role player who is the oh my god that's so slow all right let me call upon the next role player which is the r counter and the r counter is none other than toastmaster hong jan toastmaster hong jan the stage is hong toastmaster hong jan the stage is yours hi everyone uh can you guys see my screen yes oh uh I afraid I cannot turn my video because <laughs> my bandwidth is quite slow. So yeah, I, I have to turn off my video for this. Uh, for, uh, uh, for today's R counters report, uh, at first glance, we can see that there's not much. The, the overall speeches in today is quite smooth. So good job, everyone. And I will go to, into details one by one. So today's uh, Ming Kang made uh, um in the table topics and then Joshua did not make any. So you may actually have seven and five hospital there. And then Derry, congratulations, oh, you don't have any. And then Danish, during the table topics, there are repeated words uh, for that four, but it's only minor. And then for Kao Yang, uh, there are one um and er. And then for Kenneth, yes, you don't have any uh, post pillars, congratulations on that. Uh, for Lim uh, for Ani, you made a um in the table topic, and then for for today's prepare speech, uh, there's two us in the speech, and I also make quite a lot <laughs> during the report, and congratulations on Jun Hong and Chloe for not making any post filler today. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Hong Jen, for your R counter report. Now, Toastmaster Hong Jen has a great template. You can see that in the words there. However, I believe the fonts maybe could be adjusted to be a little bit bigger. For me, I can see. However, if we have, a, I'm not being, I'm not going to stereotype or be biased. However, if a, especially if we have reached a certain age, sometimes, especially for older people, sometimes the wording is a little bit hard to see. Therefore, it would be nice if the font is slightly bigger that's all i can suggest and don't worry if you're normally in toastmaster meetings we encourage people to 
switch on their videos. However, like due to his poor connection, it is acceptable. Therefore, no worries on that. Now, with that said, now I would like to call upon the Rolex of our meeting, who is the timer. Who the, our timer is none other than Toastmaster Daryl Ryan Chong. Toastmaster Ryan Yen, would you present the timing report? Sure. <laughs> Let me share the screen. Okay, so um, let, let's start with Kin Teng. So he overspent just a bit, a bit, which is 12 seconds for his um, for calling the meeting to order. For Ming Kang, he is within the time limit. Similarly, for Joshua, for the induction of the members, he's within the time limit. And for Yu Meng, also within the time limit. Now for the table topics section, um, we had a change in time for the time allocated. Instead of two minutes, it's two point uh, two and a half minutes, two minutes and 30 seconds. So for Joshua, he overspent by 13 seconds. For Kenneth, he overspent by um, five seconds. For Lim Ani, she was within a time limit. And also for Min Kang, within a time limit. For Dennis, she was over time by 29 seconds. For Yu Meng, he was also over time by 29 seconds. For the prepared speeches, um, Yi Tse, he was over time the time limit by 15 seconds. And for Ektifa, he was also the, above the time limit for by 15 seconds. Now for the evaluation, um, the time taken for Danish to take control of the evaluation section was over the time limit by 29 seconds. For Jin Hong, for the table topics evaluation, it was over time by 33 seconds. Uh, for Kenneth, it was over time. His evaluation was over time by 15 seconds. And for Chloe, it was a bit over time by 35 seconds. Now for the role players report, um, Ning Kang was within the time limit and Hong Tian is also within the time limit. And yeah, we haven't finished these two sections. That is all for me. Back to you, Danish. Thank you, Toastmaster Daryl. Now, I would like to make a little bit of a correction. It is not over time because in a speech, it is five to seven minutes. Seven minutes, especially we all know the light sequence. Green is for five minutes. Amber or yellow is for six. Red is for seven. The red shall remain, especially in contact, it should remain at red for seven and a half minutes, which is seven minutes, 30 seconds. Seven minutes, 15, it is still within time. Hence, it, it is only after 7.30. Hence, therefore, you need to make a correction on this. Otherwise, I love the timing template and I let you see where especially you can differentiate, which is the those who are over time and those who are within time by using the red and green. That is red. Therefore, however, as I mentioned earlier, and also mentioned by the table topic evaluator, that the timing needs to be slightly adjusted a little bit. Therefore, do take note on that for the next meeting. With that said, now I'm apologies if there's any background noise. I'm given five minutes for. My general evaluator report, right? If I'm not mistaken. All right. Okay. Therefore, the timer do time me in for five minutes with the lighting in. We all know three to five minutes. All right. Now the meeting started at eight o three p.m. Therefore, the SAA called the Kian Teng called the meeting to order. He briefed the rules, the house rules, on everything. One suggestion is during the briefing of the house rules. Do not have any background music. Yes, I know background music is very nice and I love that upbeat music. However, especially when the briefing of the house rules, because when you have the background music and when you have the briefing of the house rules at the same time, people will lose focus on that. They may not be able to grasp what is being said, especially if the background music is going to overpower the, the sergeant at arms calling the meeting the house rules, then it's going to be a problem because they, people are going to say, oh no, I don't hear anything. Therefore, yes, do take note on that. Now, the opening address by President Ming Kang, great opening address from a student in physics to history governance. I love your opening address. However, I would suggest is maybe you could make that circle a little bit bigger because I'm not sure whether you were using any hand gestures for the opening address. But if you were using any hand gestures, I'll come to get one button to the list. 
if you were using any hand gestures, it is impacted. Yeah, maybe a circle. Yeah, something like that. At least we can see it. Or maybe you can stay front a little bit so that we can see your hand gestures. That's the that's technology. It's a learning curve for everyone. Now, moving on to the taper topic session. Of course, everyone enjoyed the session. And then the prepared speech, great speeches by it. And of course, I've delivered my evaluation on the performances of all the role players. Now, I'm going to keep this as short as possible because the time is running up. Therefore, these are my points to take to take home. One is, of course, oh yes, I forgot the performance of the Toastmaster of the evening. Toastmaster, you mean Toastmaster, you mean did a great job on the as a Toastmaster of the evening. You brief on the history. However, when briefing on the history, while we don't have any non-Toastmaster guests today, however, if you have a non-Toastmaster guest, you should brief on the history of Toastmasters. However, as I said, today, since we do not have any guests who are non-Toastmasters, it is exempted. However, if you do have any, do make sure to brief on it. With that said, overall, I think tonight has been a really wonderful meeting. The points to improve on will be the, and of course, before I go on to the slight points of improvement, it is the slides in UM. I love that UM is using a lot of slides, especially now that, yes, while the pandemic is over and everyone's starting to ease back into the physical setting, let's not forget, technology always advances all the time. Therefore, it's only essential that us members, all of us at Toastman members, keep up with the times and continuously use the technology to the best benefits. After all, if you can link the technology and especially in the now, we are, a lot of people are going to hybrid. If you could use the technology, if, for example, at the R counter report, if you can do that in a hybrid setting, that would be wonderful. Therefore, that would be great. The chat box is, of course, very active here. However, I suggest this. And apologies that it may sound rough. However, I suggest this, especially when the prepared speech speech speakers are giving a speech, do minimize chatting because sometimes it can be a little bit distracting for the speakers. However, this is a university club. Therefore, I know it is a fun, very fun. And of course, a lively meeting. And that's why we all want university life. However, as I said, we are okay. However, there may be some members who may be perturbed. So therefore, we have to factor in everyone. After all, in Toastmasters, we embrace everyone. It is neutrality. We want to make sure everyone is comfortable. Therefore, yes. With that said, all in all, I enjoyed this meeting tonight. And of course, looking forward to the next meeting. Now, the time is 10 o'clock already. And to make it as simple as possible, I'm going to call upon, pass the control back to the Toastmaster evening. Toastmaster Yu Ming. Hi. Thank you so much, Nanish. Uh, before we uh, proceed to the awards presentation. I'd like you guys to vote for the best project speakers and evaluators. So, um, so who will be the best speech? So we start with best speech evaluator. I think that's interesting. Uh, as for the project speeches, is everyone done yet? So, uh, Tian Ting, is all the awards being received? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. No so, should I close the polls? Yeah, I already closed it. Okay, thank you so much, Tian Ting, for the updates. I may uh, announce the result to me right now. Then we can proceed with the awards presentation. Uh, anyway, uh, dear audiences, sorry for the delay on the voting session. It was a bit too pump up for for listening to evaluations. <laughs> okay.
Alright, by the way, I would like to apologize. I completely forgotten to call upon the voting session. It's not supposed to be on my prerogative. Therefore, I'd like to apologize for that. And I also forgot to check on whether the speakers are eligible for voting because most of the time, sometimes most clubs, their timing is if the time went over time, sometimes they're not eligible for voting. Therefore, apologies on my side on that. I completely missed out that part. With that, uh, back to you, Toastmaster Yun Ming. Okay. Now I'd like to share the screen right now for the award presentation. Um, if if uh, so, Zoom Master, you can go on with the music. I don't have music with me right now. So now, so we're going to start with table topic speaker. The best table topic speaker for tonight is Minkan. Congratulations for being the best topic speakers. Thank you so much. Is this your first time or, or is is or is being common for you to have more than one first table time, topics award? First oh. time in this club because it's pretty tough to get this. <laughs> oh, that's great. Congratulations for being a first timer in getting the best table topics award. Next, the the winner. The, the best prepared speech for today's meeting is drum roll, Iktifa. Congratulations, Iktifa. <gasps> wow, this is the first time. Uh, sorry, I think I start with Minkang first. Sorry, uh, this is the first time doing this awards presentation. So Minkang, I'd like you to take photo with, uh, with this award first as a sign of achievement in UM. <laughs> Hey, you mean never never announce the prize? Ah? Ming Kang? Yes. Take a photo with your prize here. <coughs> and who is taking this? I believe this it's Ting's taking the I'm photo. I'm taking the photo. Let me tin Ming Kang. Sorry, just now I was trying to share screen. Ikifa, you'll be next. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Ming Kang, you won a 2020 for KFC. Uh, uh, can you look at the camera? Yeah, in three. <laughs> Two, one, five. All good? Okay. Yes, all good. Yes. Yeah, that's great. Now it's Iktifa's turn. So Iktifa, congratulations. Wow, you're smelling. You're smelling great, great man. Three, so let's look at the camera. Three, two, one, yes. Okay. <clears throat> oh, all right. Is that okay? Is that all? Yes. Okay. So we can later last, claim your voucher. Last but not least, who will be the best evaluator for tonight's meeting? Is is our lovely uh, guest for guest for today, uh, Jun Hong from CBRE Toastmasters Club. Congratulations for being a best evaluator for tonight's meeting. So congratulations. So mm. now for the photo session. So um, yeah. Honestly speaking, it's been quite rare Please to look hear. At the camera. So in three, two, one, right? Yeah, it's quite, how often okay. do we have TTE as a best evaluator in this club? I don't recall that's a lot. It's my first best evaluator award and my first award from UF. Uh, yeah, congratulations. In fact, we hardly award TTE's uh, best evaluators. Well, you broke the chain. <laughs> okay. And lastly, I'd like to send my uh, certificate of appreciation to our general evaluator, Danish from Malacca Toastmasters Club and Malacca Bilingual at Once Toastmasters Club, if I do say correctly. Uh, thank you so much, Danish, for helping us to be a general evaluator for this meeting. Uh, of course, uh, photo sessions, as usual. All right. Show your Three, best mouse. Two, uh, one. Okay, saving. Thank you so much. Thank you all for attending. And before I like to pass the floor back to the president to Thank you. make a closing remarks. Thank you. Um, as you can see on my videos, this is how I feel about today's meeting. 
I, I find it's wonderful and it's professionally done. I really like that. Everything goes smooth. Oh my god, I, I have one more last uh, sentence to give it to all of you. Let me review right now. Yeah, I love all of you. Thanks for coming to today's meeting. And yeah, I, I can feel how happy I am attending today's meeting and see that everyone is so so performing, you know. Um from speakers to evaluators, even role players, even the MCs, like everyone is just on fire today. Now, uh, on fire, but I do have an announcement that I would like to pass to Vice President membership, Joshua, to make this announcement. Uh, very important yeah. announcement to club members. Okay, thank you, Ming Kang. So uh, this is a announcement to uh, UO University Miletos Masters Club and also maybe to other clubs as well in your own respective club. So we know that October is uh, slowly coming towards us and that means that we have to renew our membership for uh, the term October 2022 to March 2023. And for University of Miletos Masters Club members, you would need to uh, pay 200 ringgit which is uh, if you convert it, it's 45 US dollars for the membership renewal fees. And later, we will also send a official statement to the to, to our own group chat. And then you, you will uh, send the payment to the treasurer of our club. And that is all from me. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to end this meeting with uh, feedback sessions from... Perhaps the latest members of our club, Jocelyn, you okay to have a feedback for us? How do you feel joining this meeting as a member first time? Uh, I think so far so good. I learned uh, actually I learned a bit about how like the the better ways to present, especially during, for the impromptu ones and. Also, the like the topic, uh, the techniques that I can learn from as uh, from the prepared speeches as well. So overall, yeah, I did enjoy today's meeting. I I hope I hope to hear from you giving your speech for the next meeting, your first ever speech. Okay. Looking forward to that. All right. And we have, we are ten minutes over time, so I will make this short. Thanks everyone for joining. Our next meeting will be. The first week of September. Yes. First Monday yes, of September. Which is the 4th of September. 5th, right? 4th of 5th. 5th, right? It's a Monday. Yeah, 5th, 5th of and September. 5th and, yeah, so it will be, so the meetings for next month, in next month will be on the 5th and the 19th. Okay, so I will see you again for our next meetings on, uh, in September. See you. And yeah, I will officially... Yeah. Call this meeting adjourned. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Wait, don't, I don't, don't. Know. Let's go, Piccadilly. I come I, now, I come now. I thought that, I thought that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that. 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 <laughs> this, this one all no wait, longer wait for recorded. Me. This is not recorded, you're right, right? You're right. Oh, sorry, I have to start recording. <laughs> <laughs>